Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you the easy way to install a trailer hitch on your vehicle using a motorcycle lift. Today we're going to be installing a hitch on this 2019 Lexus NX300H and so let's get right into it. Installing the hitch should be pretty straightforward since there's already bolt holes in the frame that we can use to bolt onto. Here's about everything we're going to need. I'm going to use a wire brush as well as some WD to clean out the threads for the bolts. And then I'm going to use the 19 millimeter ratchet and socket for the bolts. The trickiest part of all is getting the exhaust off of the rubber hanger, which they recommend using a long crowbar or something like that. Whereas I actually went out and bought the proper exhaust pliers to, and we're going to see how those work out. Links to all of this stuff, the, the exhaust pliers and the hitch will be down below as well. And then here's some other stuff that you might want, some gloves, rubber gloves for when you're working with the WD, uh, safety glasses, a torque wrench if you want to be precise about it, or just a long breaker bar. So now let's take a look over here at the setup. You can see I have the hitch here, and I've got it strapped down to the top with a ratchet strap of the motorcycle lift. And then as I operate the handle, I can move it up into position. I also coated it before I put it on here with some of this rubberized undercoating, or you could also use truck bed liner or something like that. Since if you've ever seen hitches in the rust belt, they usually get rusty after about five years or so. The original finish just isn't strong enough. Then I also bought this universal bracket here and I had to modify it quite a bit. I cut the back lip off of it and then I bent it with a couple of angled bends. And this is, and then also you have to get this part separately, which I'll put a link to that as well, these two pieces for the wiring, which I'm not gonna cover in this video. But regardless, I just took this, mounted it on here with a couple of six millimeter bolts and I think that cleaned up really nice. Another quick pro tip is to put a receiver plug in the back of the hitch as well as the front so that then you don't have dirt and rocks and stuff being kicked up inside from the back side. So now let's get the car up on those ramps there and get this thing put on. Don't forget, even when you're using ramps and you have the parking brake and everything on, it's still a good idea to use some wheel chocks on the front, just in case. Let's take a look at what we're working with under here. So there's the two bolt holes there and there on this side. And here's the exhaust. There's the two hangers. There's one there. And then there's one up over there that we're going to have to remove to be able to drop the exhaust enough to get to the two holes that are on this side up in there. So let's work on getting the exhaust down first. So here's an up close look at this exhaust hanger. I'm going to start with this one. Put some WD-40 in there to try and lubricate it up. And then... As I said in the video, they suggested you just use a crowbar to kind of work this off, which uh, does, I could see that working, but I'm going to try out instead using the proper tool to see how much easier that is. Let's see using this. Wow, that is so easy. So definitely get yourself one of these right there. That's all you got to do. And then also make sure to use a bungee cord since we're going to have to support the exhaust now once, there we go, that'll help support it once the other one comes off. Unfortunately, the second one's in there fairly deep. Try and get some WD-40 on it. Make sure this doesn't drop on my head as we lower it down. Oh, 
All right. There we go. So now we've got the exhaust dropped and that'll give us the room that we need to get into those bolts there up where my light is. We've got those two hangers off there and there. So next step, let's clean out the holes. So here are the two bolt holes on the driver's side. Just gonna spray a little WD-40 in there and then use the brass brush to clean them out. I won't show the other side, but it's gonna be basically the same thing of just getting any dirt or anything out of there. The brass won't hurt the steel threads, so that's why we use brass instead of steel. Go ahead and clean all the dirt and dust. I want to make sure that the bolts have good contact when we bolt it on. All right, so I'll go do the other side and then we'll lift the hitch up into place and bolt it on. It might be a good idea to have a rubber mallet to be able to get it right there in place and then when you put the nuts on the washers go on so that the teeth are against the metal I'm gonna be able to put these in right now here's a better shot of the bolts going in I got all four bolts in. It ended up being a little bit more work than I thought. I tried dusting out the holes and brushing them out a little bit more. And I also put some anti-seize on the threads since this is only a two year old car and already the threads are getting pretty rusty and crusty. So uh, if you don't trust your click type torque wrench, you can always use the bar type as well to double check. That's what I did since the bar type is gonna be a lot more accurate anyways. And then I also used the electric ratchet to speed things up while I was putting them on, which helps, but definitely not necessary. I'll show you underneath. There they are. And then on the other side, and there's no issues at all with clearance. I was a little bit worried that there'd be issues here with my bracket, but not at all. It's perfectly fine. No issues at all clearing anything. The, Passenger side's a little bit tighter as you're working in here with the exhaust, but you can see there, those are snugged up. It did take a little bit longer than I thought it would be to tighten them down. It felt like they were almost stripping out, but that's just because those washers have to compress. So let's just go ahead and get the car down and then we'll finish up this video. And it's really looking good. Don't forget to put the exhaust back on the hangers and Take your bungee cord out as well before we take it down. Well, that's about it for the video. As you can see, it looks really good. Can hardly even tell it's there except for the receiver that sticks out. The rest of it just hides up under the bumper. Not the easiest install ever, but certainly a lot easier than if you had to drill the holes. And using the motorcycle lift, I think, is a really great trick that'll help you when you're trying to put on your own hitch, no matter what vehicle you have, to just make it a lot easier. And don't forget as well that to use these uh, exhaust pliers since these really just made taking the exhaust down so much easier I don't know why that you wouldn't want to just spend the 20 30 bucks on a set of those if you're at all into working on cars and 
As I said as well, the non-hybrid version, you have to deal with getting the exhaust tips out of the exhaust area here. So I'm not sure how much harder that would be. Well, hopefully you found that useful. I might make a future video on how to do the wiring if you want to see that. Although it is a lot more difficult since you have to take apart a bunch of panels in the trunk with all those plastic clips and it's a real hassle. But anyways, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.